Hey, robots! Welcome back to part two: the details, where the real work on bringing this finish happens. To explain this finish, I wanted to express a tight, scale-appropriate Japanese magazine finish on this one. They tend to show these mobile suits in a relatively new or just lightly used condition, and the weathering, if applied, is quite restrained. And with the idea in mind that these are in one one hundred scale. Many of the examples we have seen published in magazines and books in English have been finished by modelers who are very good at armor modeling, with their finishes scaled for the popular 135th scale. To my eye, they tend to over-exaggerate their mecha finishes, and to get the Japanese look, we need to shrink that down almost three times to get close to scale appropriate. And that's why you'll hear me mention that quite a few times during this video. Let me share with you how I did it on the Lupus Rex. Let's go. Step two: the panel lines. Now here is the main event for this model: the panel lining. It's usually a background feature on most designs, but for the way the Lupus is put together, and for our paint scheme this time, it's going to be all about these tight, focused panel lines. Let's kick it old school and use these Tamiya enamels, and check out if they are still useful and relevant. I'll be using the classic Tamiya X20 enamel thinner with these paints. And a quick word of caution: make sure to only use this thinner on painted parts. It's a little on the hot side. If you're only going to use one color for panel lining on white mecha, I would suggest this one, XF63 German Gray. It's a dark, warm gray and looks fantastic in contrast with white, as shown on this piece. However, because I am so fancy, I'm going to use a mix of three colors and share with you how. We could use plastic lids, but since we're going old school. I've pulled out these traditional Japanese tin mixing trays. So much nostalgia with these things. Let's mix up our other tones using our XF10 brown and give it a tray. Clean our stirrer and also one for X1 black gloss. Equally, you can also use XF1 uh, flat black. The main difference is being obviously the sheen, but also gloss black flows a little more freely and dries with a touch more transparency. I urge you to experiment with both to get a feel for the different effects they produce. Now, organizing ourselves, we have one tray for each color, and then two mixing trays out front. One will be for clean thinner, and the other one for making custom mixes. As a general strategy and theme for this model, I plan to use the gray higher up, and then mixes including brown and black as we move further down. The brown will be used in areas to indicate notions of dirt and rust in the base. For the deepest details, we can then use mostly black gloss. Let's start off with the top of the leg here and go with straight gray. Pre-wetting with clean thinner is a good technique to allow the wash to move freely along the panel line through capillary action. Then drop the gray in over the top like this. Boom. If your wash is very thin, you may not need this. Please experiment with both ways of doing this for added variance and interest on your model. I'm not cleaning my brush between mixes. You guys know that. Simply moving straight onto my next color. In this case, gloss black, and mixing it up. You can feel that the properties are ever so slightly different, and that it is runnier, for want of a better term. I just wish they had gloss versions of the other colors as well. Let's drop it into details like this. There we go. A nice heavy detail there. Done. Boom. Moving lower down the leg, and as my brush starts running out of paint, I'm planning to top it up with a brown-based mix. Again, no cleaning here. Mixing up the brown, let's deposit into the mixing tray along with some gray and black gloss to make up this dark and dirty custom panel line wash. As I hold it up, you can see that it contains undertones of dirt or rust with the brown. It's very cool. Now, it may not be super obvious at first as we work on this that it's a custom color. But it does add to the overall effect and impression at the end. Our brains know it; it's more than one straight color, even though our eyes can't tell us exactly. Or some folks looking at it may not understand this concept yet. We just know it's interesting and lifelike, which adds to the illusion of the reality of the mecha shown. Showing you here in real time, you can see that I am quite careful and methodical. You don't have to work in this way, but for the theme of being tight, disciplined, and restrained with the finish, I am using it as an opportunity to exercise those qualities within myself. Sure, we could just slather it on with gunk wash 
and come back and clean it all off, and that might be fine for another time. This one is about practicing restraint, and that quality will be apparent in the finish. You will feel that I painted this with care, discipline, and mastery of fine work, and they are the feelings I am attempting to evoke with this finished piece. Yes, I do apologize if I'm ruining your image of me about being that dirty weathering guy, but I have a I have a little bit of range. If you look closely, you can see that there is now a gradient on the piece, from the clean grey at the top to the slightly dirty looking panels further down. This helps scale our makeup. Here on this piece, you can see another mixed panel line approach, starting with grey for the top details, then adding black gloss here for the deeper details, and then grey around them, which will then mix in and slightly change the effect. Then the custom sludge mix, that's what I'll call it, the grey, brown and black, towards the bottom here to add that gradient across our piece and finishing up with black for the deep details on the bottom. On this Fodama piece, let's start directly with our custom sludge mix from the start. We can imagine that if anywhere on our mobile suit is going to be dirty, it's the feet. And the brown tinge here, the red-brown tinge, is perfect for the idea of Lupus Rex being on Mars. <music> Lastly, cleaning up the panel lines. Very important part of this. First, here's an example of before and after. Here's how they can look after we've tidied them up. And here's how they looked before. Tools required are, first, one, a soft brush. And two, a makeup brush. This is a very cheap one from Daiso. A Q-tip or cotton bud will also work here. And three, the same Tamiya X20 thinner, which I will place a few drops of here in my tray. Now here is the magic part of the Tamiya enamels. Even after a couple of days of sitting like this on the model, they have not cured. They will still reactivate and clean up. <laughs> wow, right? Quick word of warning to our Humbralisters. <laughs> yeah, Nate, that means you, mate. Don't leave Humbrals for more than an hour or two because they do cure and are very difficult, if not nigh impossible, to clean up. And the Humbral Thinner is wicked hot, almost as if it's Bundai Plastics arch nemesis. Please be careful if you go that route, but yes, I will think highly of you because it's so manly. With the soft brush, damp with thinner, gently reactivate the areas you want to clean and remove them to some kitchen paper. Avoid the temptation to flood the panel lines with thinner. This can lead to removing the panel lines altogether and then you are back to the start again. You can see here that by ever so slightly feathering the wet paint, it gives a nuance of weathering that is correct for the scale. This is exactly the effect I'm after here. If you want it to look more sharp and clean, simply wipe it all off, either with the soft brush or the makeup brush or Q-tip, if that's all you've got. As your brush accumulates paint, wipe it on your paper to keep it nice and clean. This helps us in achieving this sharp, yet graduated panel lines that gives a pleasing effect of scale. In a way, we can think of this as painting the unnecessary paint off. Making it less but better. Removing for perfection. For some sections, particularly at the top of pieces where I would like them to be cleaner and brighter, I will use the makeup sponge to achieve a cleaner wipe, like this. Helps it to become nice and sharp. In my mind, there are basically two versions of panel lines, sharp and blurred. Here, I have gone with a very finely blurred panel line. Yes, that sounds a little counterintuitive and somewhat contradictory, but it's part of my idea to have this looking 1-100 scale and microing down the effects. Thank you. 
Step three, the lupus green detail. The Barbatos small details changes from red to green for the two lupus variants and it's a very nifty little detail and I was excited to try something a tad different on this one. Green candy effect as a panel line wash. Super happy with how it turned out and it's very easy. Let me share it with you. First step is a reflective metallic base. Anything will work here I think. A silver enamel would be quite nice but I didn't have one. So let's try out hand painting these Vallejo metal colors and they have a chrome. Much yes. Then let's lay a Tamiya clear green over it. Again, enamel would work nicely here over the acrylic, but I do not has. So we'll need to wait 24 hours for the Vallejo paint to cure and we should be good. In legit Vallejo YouTube tutorial style, <laughs> I'm using an old washed plastic lid as a palette. Our mate Jose would be very proud of me. It's actually really nice paint too. It contains a shaker ball for fast mixing and comes out thin and ready to go. Smells that it has an alcohol base. Touch our brush in water and let's go. You can see I'm freehanding this unsupported. Key is to have at least one hand grounded in contact with your surface, say your table, to keep it steady and to use a nice pointed brush. This is the second of the Leon Hardy sables I picked up from Hobbyco coming up on two years back and it still has a lovely useful point. So consider these brushes tested. I will sometimes hold my breath slightly and I'm careful not to overload the brush. It's not a high capacity brush like a Winston Newton, for example. So I do like it for this sort of precise work as there is less risk of paint zipping off the brush and flooding the detail. But having said that, it's just more about practicing with the brushes that you use to learn their handling characteristics. For the tail, the detail is very, very fine. So I've gone with a brand new Tamiya HF brush, the smallest size, carefully, carefully. And oops, <laughs> a quick word on recovery. If you do happen to get a little bit of paint outside the lines, not to fear. A quick wipe of a soft alcohol based thinner will take it off. And as we've used a lacquer paint as our primary coat, so long as we're gentle, it will take the acrylic paint off and leave the primary coat in a pristine condition. Oh, the magic. Fast forward 24 hours and our Vallejo Chrome has hopefully cured and we can now wash over it with Tamiya's Clear Green, thinned with Mr. Hobby's Hobby Color Thinner. Roughly two parts thinner for one paint. This one has been my favorite for a few years now. Once I discovered it also thins Tamiya acrylics perfectly, it was one less bottle and solvent to keep in supply. You know, less but better. Let's use a higher capacity brush this time. It's a Tamiya Modeling Brush Pro. This one's a sable, it's a number zero, and has a much fatter belly, so will hold much more thin paint, perfect for delivering a thin wash. Working as if this is a kind of funky green panel line, I very carefully touched the thin green into the recess detail and it flowed perfectly and did not bother the underlying chrome at all. Mission success! And it already looks really good. Hey guys, come join us in the Brobot Inner Circle on Patreon slash paintonplastic.com for more steps on the Lupus Rex, like the custom decals, the weathering and the chipping. We also have a Discord community for more shenanigans, as well as the Facebook group. Links for you in the comments below. And oh yeah, please subscribe and like the video. Thanks. Wrapping up and there we have it, a nice tight and simple finish. Nothing fancy, detailed with old school products and yet Lupus Rex looks fantastic, even saying it myself, I love this finish. So Tamiya's are totally still relevant and wonderful to use. 
It's a lovely opportunity to become reacquainted with them after many years. It's like meeting an old friend. Hope this two-part series on the Lupus Rex gives you some cool ideas to try out on your next Gumpler. But of course, you can apply these techniques to any model with great results too. More soon. Thanks as always, Brobots. See ya. Big thanks to Hobbyco and Little Robot. I do my best to buy from and support local businesses to keep our money in our communities and to empower physical events. I get to meet you guys and hang out. Fun. A sincere heartfelt thanks to our top patrons. Ivan, Grant, Con, Jack, RJ, Mr. Tweets, Matthias, Peter, Robert, Kelso, Kevin, David, Derek, Dominic, Nick, and welcome Danny. This episode was supported by you. Your support empowers me and makes all this happen. Sincerely, thank you very much, guys. More soon.